Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next put on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowloon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowloon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. Sir, there's How no much drama. time remaining? Just need Don't to check worry, your pockets folks. if you want to pass. Anything can still happen. Okay, thank you, sir. This, uh, this will be over in no time. All right. Good job, sir. Thank you. Remember, folks, that endurance racing is all about getting your car to cover as many miles as possible. Collecting pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47? Hmm. What are you thinking? Welcome. Thanks. 
I know I'm asking a lot. Not every day you get to meet a superstar, right? And my yes, sir, the crowd's a good one. She turns 50 next week. I'm stressing out so much right now. I just saw a fight downstairs by the garage. Some guy dressed as one of the flamingo mascots just got jumped by this other man. I ran away as fast as I could. We should call this don't a Huey thing. Well, I don't know. Race race I really don't want to get involved. Miles under the got a lot of unpaid it's drugs, much about you know? The and and the guy was definitely weird. The Just before the attack, I heard him mumbling something about Sierra Knox getting it. Can you believe that? What if he's a stalker? Yeah, we're calling security, all right. <laughs> the only thing we're calling is a bartender. I need a drink. Doctor gave me some sort of vitamin hydration boost, normally reserved for the drivers. Fixed me right up. What, like doping? No, it's for after the racing's done. Although it did kind of look like the Tour de France in there, but with all the syringes and IV stands, I think Sierra Knox had an appointment in there as well. Didn't meet her, though. Shame. I hear she's fun to be around. Good. Time's up. Unless they're communists. We have our winner. Or worse, arty people from New York or Provincetown. They should really just stay away. Well, what do you expect? He's a scalper. Of course it's expensive. Why don't you try that gambling machine? Oh, wait. You're on a roll. Hi there. Want a ticket? VIP. This is the real deal. No forgery. This will get you access Remember, to folks, all your favorite that stars. Remember, endurance races yeah, is all about back, getting your car to cover as many miles as, many miles as possible, Tempted? no matter no. how burned out. Well, or well come and find me if you change your mind. Can you believe? If you could show me the invite, please. For all you race buffs out there, I can tell you that the winner will again be okay, presented you're all with fine. champagne. Okay, you're all fine. After a few years of regular sparkling wine, that is real champagne from the eastern region of France. One fact of the day for you. Yeah, I never really did understand why Sierra was going for this whole day job thing. I mean, CFO of Kronstadt, sure, it sounds impressive, but just think about all the time she's wasting. Why not just live off the family estate? Well, if you ever get to know her as well as I do, you'll find out that it actually makes a lot of sense. Oh, please do spread your wisdom. Big Snarky doesn't suit you, darling. But if you must know, Sierra has a bit of a daddy complex. It's entirely understandable, really, her father being one of the foremost innovators in the world. But, as one might expect, he's not the most present of fathers. So she takes the job to be near him? Not sweet, but very unlike the Sierra I know. Started out as an intern in the finance division, worked herself all the way to the top under an assumed name, cutting down opposition left and right. It wasn't always pretty, let me tell you. And her father had no idea. That girl really wanted to prove something. She would have done well in fashion. Wow, he must have been proud. Robert Knox, proud of his daughter. Do you know what he said when she walked into that first meeting? Was presented to him and the rest of the board as the new CFO. Don't screw up. That's harsh. That's Robert Knox. Did you see Robert Knox at the party last night? I think I caught the rarest of glimpses sometime after midnight, but I'm not sure. No, seems like you were busy with that driver from Team Thwack. What's his name? Never mind that. 
Just answer the question. I didn't see it, no, but then again, I understand from Sierra that he's been working hard. Although, yeah, it's not like him to miss out on a party. Yeah, that's what I mean. Work hard, party hard. Sierra doesn't get that from strangers. You think they had another falling out? Oh, who knows? Sierra tries as hard as she can, but she's always been a distant second compared to her father's work. It's sad, really, when you think about it. But then again, who of us with privileges really have any kind of meaningful relationship with our parents? <laughs> Not me, that's for sure. So, what was he like, the driver? <sighs> Shut up. Accident happened. Wouldn't be the first time to be this way. Remember two years ago when that driver from Eastern Europe got totally in a bus? Someone has met this That's exactly what I was thinking. Even with the added security, I'm seeing people wander around here that I've never seen before. Who knows what they might be up to? Especially Moses Lee and his crew. Cars are also more fragile than ever. Did you know that Sierra Knox herself requested that the roll cage was pulled from her car to make it lighter and faster? That woman is that old. Grace told me over beers last night. Also told me how Sierra had blown a fuse when Grace refused to comply. Apparently, they reached some sort of a compromise. I would not want to drive that car. Any major crash, you're not walking away from that. I couldn't agree more. Seven, moving in to investigate. Come on. I'm sorry, Sierra. It was close. We'll get him next time, yeah? Safe out there, security man. So I saw that race official here a while ago. What's his name? Rudder? Max Rudder, yeah. Royal pain in the rear. Used to be a pro racer himself until he got run off the track by Robert Knox in some celebrity race about 10 years ago. Holds a major grudge as I understand it. Doesn't sound good. Well, 
Get into a race with any of the Noxes, and you're lucky to just come out with a few scrapes on your chin. I've never seen anyone with a desire to win like those two. They will stop at nothing to win. I did notice that Sierra was a little rowdy while she was waiting to get on the track. You don't know the half of it. I've patched in so many tiny boosts and performance amplifiers on her car, I wouldn't be surprised if it took off and went into orbit around the planet. Not to mention the AI her father had installed in the firmware to optimize performance of the engine. Is that legal? Hell no. Why do you think Rudder keeps prowling around? He knows the score. But as long as the car is on the track, there's nothing he can do. And the only way she's getting out is if the car blows up or she wins the race. That guy is a thing of beauty, though. Really is. I'm very proud of what we've achieved. I wish it was a little safer, though. If she crashes, she's not getting out of that wreck alive. Forty-seven, the race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. We need to talk to the boss man about these uniforms again. It's polyester. So I got my mind. kids some God and high up birthday so he could look like his old man and now he runs around in it pretends to be a cop or a firefighter man that kind of stinks hmm. i like this job compared to my last job it's a picnic i was a prison guard for four years every day you're a witness to it a slow decline and ultimately the desolation of the human spirit compared to that this is a breeze Miss Knox, thanks for taking the time. I understand this isn't a formal interview, but just wanted to touch upon a few things real quick. Quick, hopefully being the operative word here. Uh, yes, of course. You were ahead for most of the race, but it seemed like you inexplicably started to drift a little towards the final few laps. How hard is it to keep up for as long as you need in a race like this? Not all that hard, to be honest. I think the car started to show some issues around the halfway mark, and despite my best efforts, it really slowed down around the final three laps. The driver can only do so much, you know? Yeah, sure. So the car may have had some issues, you say? I understand your father, the famous Robert Knox, built it himself. Along with Grace Miller, who apparently needs to do better next time. Hmm, I see. Now, I did talk to her a few minutes ago, and according to her, the car operated flawlessly. Now. You've been under some pressure with this Tongan Valley incident. Oh, I see. So that's what this is about. Tell you what, you reach out to Kronstadt Corporate PR and talk to them about that. I believe they have a very slick statement ready for you. As for this interview, we're done. Don't talk to me ever again. Damn it. So did Dr. Sorensen manage to get Sierra Knox's phone number? I heard him arguing with that Kronstadt lawyer earlier. No, didn't have any luck. Once he's done with that other driver, he'll just have to use the intercom and call her over the PA system instead. She should be able to hear it just fine. All right. As long as it's in hand, yes? Attention Sierra Knox, your vitamin and rehydration. 
start, so be prepared to see the future maxed to its fullest. I'm telling you, Miss Knox is going to be pissed. I did the pre-race checkup on her. Ladies and gentlemen, the fun well, is not over yet. We will now kick off the exhibition race. race. See technology of the future at its almost loses finest. a patient to a Enjoy. harmless case of dehydration. Now he has to deal with this guy suffering from urinary retention. <laughs> not his day. Let's just hope he doesn't somehow screw up the revitalization procedure on Miss Knox. I know it's just a simple injection, but given his track record these past few days... Well, at least we know who's buying us beer tonight. Ain't that the truth? Hi. I hope everything is secure. Mr. Duran, I'm gonna have to ask you to get a move on now. I have Sierra Knox coming in next for a post-race IV vitamin boost. I don't want to keep her waiting. I'm doing my best here, Doc. Mr. Durant, I appreciate that you have a shy bladder and all, but really, we, we need to move this along. If you cannot deliver a sample, I have no choice but to fail your test. You're not really helping here, Doc. Okay, filled it right up to the top. Thank you. You can go. We'll have the results for you in a week or so. Whoa. I'll prepare for her arrival. Yes, I'm Sierra Knox. You paged me. I have an appointment. Ah, oh, Miss Knox. If you can just take a seat, please. Oh, great. Miss Knox, I'm ready for you. Let's do this. Miss Knox, come on in. Have a seat and relax. So, what's on the menu? Ugh, please Something go away. Take care of this You're so not in my pain league. in my neck, I hope. I promise. Once I'm done, you won't feel a thing. So, what's in this thing anyway, Doc? Mostly floral extracts, hemlock, belladonna, aconite. It's designed to be fast and efficient. Fast and efficient. I like that. Wait, wait belladonna? Isn't that poisonous? Yes. Should I be concerned? I'm not. Just relax. It'll be over soon. Hey, you know what? I do feel refreshed. Thanks, Doc. My pleasure, Miss Knox. 
Uh, I, I don't feel, I don't feel well, Doctor. Don't worry. It'll be over soon, Miss Knox. <laughs> Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. This is Lindsay LaCour reporting from the Global Innovation Race event. The race is now finished and I've retreated back to the marina to catch a chill ocean breeze in this scalding Miami heat. The marina is where local food vendors such as fast food epicure Florida Man have set up shop. Reasonably quiet at the moment, but with the race over, this serene spot will soon be overrun with famished and inebriated racegoers. So I'll seize the opportunity and sample the local cuisine before oh. I need to stand in line. This is Lindsay LaCour, chilling. Thank you. Wouldn't have happened if you were there, that's for sure. I would have stood up and told him exactly what I thought you were doing. Excuse me, by the way, Kyle. Thank you. You were seriously going to try to ask me. I may only be a tech reporter, but I have ambitions too, you know. The fact is that Kronstadt is very likely withholding information on what actually happened in Tongan Valley. And I think the people have a right to know. My editor got me to chase the story too a few months ago. I called up their PR department, talked to some guy called Mickelson. Gave me the biggest runaround I've ever been on. Complete dead end. That's why I'm thinking I should take the shot here. Robert Knox has got to know something, and if I can corner him somehow... Risky. Jim Poe publicly took on the responsibility. Hell, did you see that leaked interview from their local network? He bragged about how he'd deployed those drones against the rebels and completely destroyed them. Knox can just point to that and be done with it. But he can't deny that those were his drones. Stolen goods? They'd lost a shipment of Raptor drones when the Maelstrom raided the cargo ship in the South China Sea last year. Darling, he can deny anything. Complete BS. Of course. But good enough to provide them with plausible deniability. These people are good, Jen. Yep. You're not going to catch them screwing up. <sighs> Maybe you're right. My editor did tell me he'd put me back on weather if I rattled the cage again. Play it safe. Live to write another day. Lovely day. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Well, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time, I tried to have a meeting with him. He had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Whoa. 
Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Mendez, good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Excuse me. Can you tell me where to go, please? It's just up these stairs. chance to get in, I'm afraid. Well, that's a shame. Would have been nice to be able to break a story like that on my first run. Dream on, pal. It's a beautiful vehicle, that's for sure. I understood from the briefing earlier that we're just supposed to grab him if something happens to it. No poking around the engine or anything like that. Uh, Knox is a genuine technical a, genius. I know you're He's really protective there about his no projects. Prefers to fix everything project. himself, apparently. Don't worry about I'm grabbing him. About if anything goes awry, you'll see him down here as fast as lightning. Gotcha. Ed Mendez, military contractor and field artillery officer, skill level 4. Please don't blow me up. This is the RK Speed Mark III. This particular car is the first production unit and is identical to the one Sierra Knox has been racing these past two days. But being the very first one, it's a bit special to Mr. Knox, so he, he won't allow anyone to drive it. It's very impressive. What sort of fuel system does it use? It's a hybrid engine partly run by electrical current and partly run on special race fuel. The dual engines serve two purposes. One boosts the acceleration of the car and the other keeps it on the track for, for extended periods. So, batteries and good old-fashioned explosive gasoline. It's the ticket. I see. Very interesting indeed. And the rumors about the core system of the car effectively being run by an AI? Well, that's a bit of sci-fi storytelling made up by the press. Knox has a wide range of monitoring setups hooked up to the car's internal systems, but as far as I'm aware, there's, there's no AI. Okay, okay. Well, um, would it be possible for me to get a few pictures of me inside the car? For the story, of course. I'm afraid not. We've had a few incidents with people getting a little too handsy, so we've had to restrict access to the car. I'm, I'm sure you understand. Yes, of course. Well, thank you for your time. One small bottle of the patented Kronstadt Octane Booster will drastically improve the performance of any vehicle with a Kronstadt RK Mark II engine or above. At this time, the innovative advances offered by the fuel booster are so great, they absolutely crush the opposition in any race. As such, its use has not yet 
speaking, it's too powerful. Beautiful shapes. Feminine yet masculine. Yeah, I feel like my gender is melting away here. Wow, that is just tremendous. Technology will take us into an entirely new plane of existence. Expanding on the consumer line of products is key to the global success of Kronstadt Industries. The K-Bunny is one example of the like innovative thing. approach to robotic companionship spearheaded by the Selling millions of units, the K-Bunny was an overnight success and has been the friend to an entire generation of children all over the world. The well-being of the world is one of the most important things to Kronstadt. And so the development of robotics and artificial intelligence in medical use has been a key focus area for us. At the legendary Gamma facility in Hokkaido, Japan, the world's most highly intelligence, Kai, performs most of the surgery on the clientele. Using state-of-the-art surgery robots, Kai has already saved more lives than any single human surgeon in history. I like that. Very interesting, don't you think? Outstanding. It's a work of art, it really is. Oh, I'm almost feeling a bit of existential dread here. What is that stuff, anyway? I think some of the teams are using it to increase car speed. Heard a few Kronstadt mechanics talking about it the other day. Something about Knox not wanting to use it because she wants to win on her own. Imagine that. Is it that illegal? I don't know. Knox ordered them to put it here, so they asked me to put it here. So I just did that. Not touching it again. Sounds like a good idea. Sounds like one of those entirely unfounded rumors that get spread around down at the local bar after work. A palace isn't in a state to be field tested on any scale. Well, Lyle from outsourcing told me there'd been a request to reach out to Jin Po. The reply back had been positive. That's insane. If that's true, why would Knox risk another test after the, the Tongan Valley Massacre? Well, from what I understand, Jin Po is pretty lax with his import taxes and has a lot of money in the bank. I suspect Knox wants a piece of the pie. If Poe offs a few rebels to help improve Palace, Knox is apparently down with that. If this leaked, the media would eat Knox alive. He dodged that Tungan Valley bullet pretty well. Only because Jin Po is a lunatic and had no qualms about taking the blame for the massacre. Still, 
makes you wonder. Mm, sure does. Hey, let's get on with it. Scanning photo into palace targeting system now. All done. System updated. Targeting matrix is green. All right. Palace, you're clear to fire. Engage at your discretion. Well done, Palace. All green. I have to say, I'm feeling a bit of pride to pull up inside me. Maybe that's just the burrito I had. Okay, McInnes, let's run this test. You're sure you fixed all outstanding issues with the micro-actuators? Yeah, boss, I'm sure. Checked an hour ago. All lights are green. And this fella will make your special place all tingly. But, but, but listen, there's something we should talk about. What? There's a problem, so help me God. Well, it's just that we still don't know what the cause of last week's accident was. I've looked over everything, and I just can't nail it. Something about the console, but I'm not sure what. So? Well, a man died. Yes, that was quite unfortunate. I believe legal has resolved the matter with the wife. Well, we don't. Well, m more importantly, it feels like the biometric scanners aren't 100%. If you really want to go ahead with this crazy demo, we should at least make sure the console can't fail. It's not exactly tamper-proof. So fix it. Look, McKinnis, I'm counting on you here. I'm literally putting my life into your hands with this demo. We need to pull this off. I know you don't like it, but I'm the boss and I like it. Big sales is what I do. Make it work. I'll see what I can do. Good man. Palace, initiate core AI status update. How are your systems operating today? Okay, McInnes, let's run this test. You're sure you fixed all outstanding issues with the micro-actuators? Yeah, boss, I'm sure. Checked an hour ago. All lights are green. This fella will make your special place all tingle. AI using all cores as I requested? I know the software doesn't need it at this point, but I want to see what happens if we stress our friend here a little. Look, I get that this is an important day in all knocks, but we're fine. Let me just boot up this diagnostics tool and we can... Wait, 2.21? That's gotta be a mistake. 2.04, it's dropping. Why is it dropping? You are kidding me, right? Biggest day of the year, the decade, and you're telling me we're still red? Are you telling me we're still red? Look, hang on. I, I, it, it doesn't make any sense. I, I just checked this. I ran the calibrations twice. Let's do something painfully clear to you, McKinnis, you pitiful amateur. This machine will work by the time our guests arrive. I entrusted you with the responsibility of a simple calibration, and you somehow managed to screw that up royally. If you don't have this mess sorted by the time I return, I'll make sure you end up back in that filthy little alley at Kabukicho where I found you. Does rummaging through containers looking for silicone rejects for your disgusting love doll sound good? I'm sure the Yakuza would love to welcome you back too. You understand me? Yes, I understand. I'll make it work. See that you do. What is that marketing quote again? Palace represents the next level. Mr. Mendez. Uh, Robert, it's Derek. Mr. Mendez is here already. He's eager to get on with the demo. You should come by as soon as possible. Ted, good to finally see you. Guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. 
I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this, android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward now. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead, make my day. Just scan one of the images, Mendez. How's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. And just think how much more everybody can accomplish together. My brains, your money. The sky's the limit here, my friend. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I still prefer the human touch. You're part of an old institution and you prefer the traditional approach. I respect that. But like it or not, this is the future you're looking at. Autonomous synthetic systems will entirely remove human agents from direct engagement. I guarantee this thing will absolutely murder anything you put it up against. Sounds promising. So, Mr. Mendez, impressive so far, yeah? Let me quickly show you our on-site robotics you. lab. It's small, but state-of-the-art, and it's fully mobile, so you can deploy it anywhere. So, as part of the deal, Kronstadt will throw in one deployment cell per five units. Outfitted to enable on-site adjustments and calibrations, it'll be shipped in a bulletproof shell and can be dropped anywhere on the planet using the Kronstadt T-37 deployment drones. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKinnis know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Uh, listen, I realize this may sound trivial, but the Fountain View soda dispenser has been on the fritz since we moved in. I can't work without my energy drinks, and I have been forced to bring my own. Well, y yes, that's right, they fixed it today, but, and here's the problem, you see, Mr. Knox and his entourage of gun-wielding bodyguards managed to empty the machine in one hour. I was thrilled to receive the email telling me the machines were back in order, but to come in and discover how Knox and his goons have been seemingly bathing in Fountain View all morning... <laughs> well, let me tell you, the disappointment is substantial. Not a matter for HR. Uh, how so? I... Well, I... I, see, I, I don't think it's wise of me to take it up with Mr. Knox himself. No, I... Oh. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh, 
Uh, yes, yes, well, uh, thank you. for another demonstration, please. Excellent. But let me just call Mr. Knox and bring him down here. Uh, Robert, it's Derek again. Mendez is ready for round two. You really need to get down here ASAP. skip the intro part. You know why we're building this, Ted. We're building the ultimate infiltration unit. Human-looking, driven by the best AI Kronstadt has ever built. A unit capable of full environmental immersion, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Palace is equipped with extremely advanced facial recognition systems, capable of complex skin texture analysis. Ultrasonic 3D information capture ensures the right targets are taken down every time. It's so good, I'm willing to stake my life on it. You know what to do, Ted. Bring it. Target acquired, Robert Knox. Aw, oh, shit. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. Oh, God, this isn't happening. Really? I know, I've been spending too much time on your brother and neglected you and your needs. I promise, once this presentation is done and Palace has been given the seal of approval, I promise I'll dedicate all my time to you. You'll change the world, Dolores. I know Knox thinks Palace is the big thing, but he's wrong. Nobody will care about that abomination once they see your splendor experience everything you have to offer. People don't want strong warriors fighting battles in far-off countries with names nobody can remember. They want companionship. Someone to spend their hours and years with. This is what Knox doesn't understand. He sees you as an object, a tool to satisfy some primal, physical urge. He's a savage. I'm creating life here, Dolores. Your life. Other people's lives. A man like Knox has no idea what it's like to move through the world unnoticed. Unloved. A man like Knox who surrounds himself with sycophants and yes-men and people who will go to any lengths to impress him in order to get access to his riches. What does he truly know about the human condition? about the crippling loneliness felt by millions of people, young as well as old. Well, sure, companionship is about the physical aspect as well, Dolores. That's why I'm building you the way I am. I am I wrong to want to create a beautiful creature? Am I wrong to have physical desires towards my own creation? I think not. We have a connection, you and I. A genuine emotional bond, unlike anything else in the world. In time, others will have this with you as well. I'll just imagine, one day, you'll be the most loved creature in the world. And I'll be your first love. <sighs> Hello, I'm Dal Oris, the new companion robot from Kronstadt Industries. Ugh, <laughs> way too corporate.
Command something, just two seconds. First assignment for Kronstadt? I haven't seen your face before. Yeah. Got signed on for this event last week. Guess they've generally beefed up security, huh? Just met a couple of ex-Cicada buddies. Well, apparently there's this splinter group of nut jobs running around killing off CEOs all over the world. My agent told me requests for security personnel with military experience has exploded. Good for us, I guess. I'm pulling in a triple rate on this job. If that's the new standard, I hope your nut jobs keep it up. Well, as long as they stay away from here. Otherwise, we're going to have to retire them real quick. Am I right? Wouldn't even know what hit them. Everything under control. Well, Talk to you later. Have fun tonight. Bye. Jenny, it's Antoine. I need to book another appointment with the eye specialist. What's his name? No, not for me, for Knox, you doofus. It's still very sensitive, and I've seen him use the eye drops a lot lately. He'll never admit to it, but it's getting worse. Let's just book a time and stuff find him, all right? All right, we'll talk later. Hello? Speaking, yes. What? No, uh, that's highly irregular, sir. I assure you, everything is fine. You have nothing to worry about. Mr. Knox is entirely loyal to the program. Yes, well, surprise visits aren't really his thing. But if you insist, we expect to fly out tomorrow.
and storytelling around it, ensuring the world gets the access it needs, but also ensuring Mr. Knox gets the privacy he's entitled to. Yeah, sounds like you're just a secretary. I need to get back to my work now. I can't. I have so many things I need to fix before this day is over. There's just no way. Talk to you later. Have fun tonight. Bye.
Hi. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle this Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And, and you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> If you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. 